Yo, YouTube, what is up, baby? Um, yo, this is going to be the second YouTube AMA video. I filmed this back over the holidays. I didn't have enough time to edit it and upload it with all the stuff going on, but I'm doing it now. Also, there was somewhat of an audio issue, but I think I've made it to the point where it's going to be somewhat reasonable. Um, yo, leave your question down below. I'd love to get out another YouTube AMA, hopefully within a week. Uh, you guys probably thought that I forgot about this. I even mentioned in the video, but I didn't. Yo, on to the video. Enjoy. Yo, what is up, YouTube? You guys probably think I forgot about this, man. It's been about a month since the last time we did a AMA on YouTube. It was actually our first one. The first one I took questions from Twitter. The questions for this video are going to be from the last video. So for the next video, leave your question down below in the comment section. Upvote the questions that you like. It'll make it so it's more likely for me to answer them in the next vid. And yo, let's jump into this. So first up, we got Jamie Walker that says, what, uh, what's your feelings on the doc um, about his acceptance speech and that he mentioned you in it? Um, was a big fan of the, uh, the doc and also now a big fan of you as well. Um, Jamie's talking about doc winning the award. It was about like last month, but doc won the, uh, the streamer of the year award. Um, I think it was at the, what? It was at some game award. They might've, it might've been the game awards. Um, but yo, I think it's an amazing thing that doc won. Definitely deserves it. Doc's always somebody that's pushing streaming forward, man. He's always coming up with new ideas. He's a great entertainer. You know, there's always something new going on in the doc stream, man. He's always killing it. Um, and he shouted me out when he was mentioning a bunch of other awesome gamers that he gets to play with. Um, so he said he mentioned some of the best gamers and he happened to throw my name in there. So, yo, big shout out to the doc for that, man. Mad props for him winning that award. And, uh, you know, feels really good that he'd even think about mentioning me in that moment. So, you know, love the doc. Big shout out to him. And then the follow-up question to that, um, STFU seriously asked, how did you first start gaming with Doc? How did that come about? Um, so I first started gaming with Doc. It was, I'd already been streaming for about a little, little over two years. Um, and I started playing PUBG. I started doing really well in PUBG. Made it to the top um, of the leaderboards for solos, for duos. My channel was doing really well at the time. Doc obviously was interested in PUBG. Um, because he came from H1Z1, was his always, he's always been playing some, some BRs on Twitch. And uh, he just reached out to me one day. He, uh, he DM'd me on Twitter and was like, hey man, would you want to team up and run some games together? And I was like, absolutely. I'd already been a fan of the Doc's channel at that time. Uh, I had watched him in H1Z1 and he's come up through that. And uh, when he asked if I wanted to play it, it absolutely. We jumped in first day, we ended up doing like 10 plus victories. And then it became a thing where it's like, yo, 10 victories on the day, 10 victories on the day. It was a great time with Doc and yo, in those early days, some of those early days when we teamed up with the Doc, man, I remember we had like 16 win games in PUBG when it was only Aaron Gell. And I'm talking 40 minute games. We play all day, we'd lose like one match, man. It was a different time in Battlegrounds back then, different time entirely, uh, but it was a really good time as well. And so, yo, that's how it all came about. Uh, up next, Machete asks, where is Vis in 10 years? Do you want a family? Um, do I want a family? Absolutely. One day. Um, where am I in 10 years? Whenever anybody asks me this type of question, it's like, where do you see yourself 10 years, five years down the line, better than where I'm at now and doing something that I want to do, because that's what I'm always trying to strive for, get better and improve. But the big thing with that man and the big thing nowadays, stuff changes so quick. Gaming changes, life changes, all, all sorts of things change. Um, I think it's really hard to predict where you're going to be in 10 years, you know, because you might, you're what you want in two years from now might not be the same thing that you want now. So it's impossible to say, um, I can tell you this five years ago, before I ever started on Twitch, right when I started getting the ideas about starting on Twitch, I would want to be right where I'm at right now. Um, so really like, I think more of like in shorter term stuff that I'm going for short term goals, things that I always want to be focused on. And I know that if I focus on those things, it's going to lead me to somewhere that I really want to be. Obviously, sometimes like down the road, I'm like, this could be really cool. I could be aiming for this sort of thing or headed in this direction. But I think that saying, oh, this is exactly where I will be. Maybe sometimes, maybe, maybe for some people, maybe if you have like exactly where you want to be, maybe it's some big thing that you're going for and you got it in 10 years, that, uh, like in your mind in 10 years, you want to be there. I think that could be a good thing. But uh, I like focusing more on like shorter term stuff and it's going to lead me to somewhere that I want to go. Um, but yeah, you know, hopefully that answers your question, Machete. Up next, we got Eric Fabian. He's asking, 
whenever you're streaming with someone like Crafty or Doc, is it weird not to call them by their real name? Uh, and do you refer to them as Crafty Doc off stream regularly, or are they just always nicknamed guys? Um, so everybody pretty much that I've met through streaming or gaming, I always call them by their, their stream name and game name. That's like how I know them basically. And I'd imagine for a lot of people, if you've ever met somebody online, um, most of the time you call them still by the, their gamer tag, right? So Doc, I, a lot of the time I'll call Doc, Doc. Doc's a little bit different because Doc in person, you know, that's, that's a different situation. Um, but like Crafty, I still call him Crafty. Like, of course I know his real name. Um, but yeah, like even like Break, Smack, I always have called them by their, uh, by their gamer tag. So I still call them by that, even in person. And they call me Vis. But the thing about that is a lot of my friends call me Vis. Vis has been a long time nickname. Uh, coming up through sports. Um, let's see. Scoop is asking, how many hours do you spend playing games off air? Scoop, very close to zero. Um, most of the time, I don't, I don't want to play games after I've been playing games all day. You got to think, I've played games all day for like four and a half years straight, right? And I stream every single day. If I play games when I'm off stream too, I'll burn myself out. Like whenever I'm off stream, I'm trying to do other things. Usually hitting the gym, hanging with family, you know, making food. I don't know. There's all sorts of stuff. Hanging with friends, doing stuff with my dog, you know, watching YouTube videos. Maybe I watch a little bit of Twitch, a um, bunch of different stuff, but watching UFC. Um, usually I don't play. I don't play when I'm off stream. If I'm going to play something, I want to stream it. Um, so yeah. Uh, Sengage asks, where did you work before streaming? So before I started streaming, I worked at a Costco. Um, I was 20 at the time. Um, uh, before that, like I obviously went through high school, played a bunch of, bunch of sports, played football and just did tons of sports all the way up from God, from when I could walk until the end of my senior year. Um, then I went to college afterwards for about two years at the same time I was working some different jobs, decided that college, college wasn't really for me. Always did well in college, but left um, and started working. And I worked at a bunch of different places. Eventually, I ended up working at uh, Costco. And I worked at that Costco from when I first started streaming for... I was there beforehand. That's actually how I saved up money to build my first PC and like get all the equipment that I needed. And um, I worked there until about 10 months into streaming. And about after 10 months, I worked up to the point where... I was getting to the close to the point that I was going to get partnered. Um, I had like 150 people on average that would tune in, um, like at my peak. And, uh, so yeah, that's where I worked. I worked at Costco before streaming, bro. Did about everything that you could do there. I mean, everything. David Sinks asks, can you rank the top five pop tarts in order? Um, David Brown sugar, cinnamon, Pop tarts, number one. S'mores, number two. Probably chocolate chip, number three. I think Oreos have now got some pop, tar pop tarts out there. They sound pretty good. I actually haven't tried them, but I'm going to put them in, but it's my number four. And you're going to say, Vis, you haven't even tried them. How are you going to put them as your number four? Just because I know, bro, they're number four. And uh, let's go Wildberry, number five. Also, just to throw out there, if you enjoy strawberry pop tarts or cherry, you're wrong. And uh, you probably need psychological help because they're the worst pop tarts of them all. And I don't know why you'd ever eat them when you could eat a brown sugar cinnamon or any other pop tart for that matter. <laughs> uh, Amanda Rios says, my question is, can you show us your stats on Apex? Um, Amanda, if you want to see my stats, go to my Twitch channel and do exclamation point stats in the chat and it'll pop up um, a clip of my stats. Carlos Riviera asks, when you are looking slash speaking to chat and not looking at your game screen, how are you able to run and move without hitting things? Uh, Carlos, I'm playing like out of my peripheral vision. You know, I've been streaming now for about four and a half years and just about a vast majority of those days has always been me playing a battle royale style game. So I've always kind of gotten used to like looking at the chat and I have my chat close enough. I have another monitor close enough to my game monitor where I'll be looking at it, but I can also like see it on my peripheral vision. So I can be talking with chat, but it's kind of still like autopiloting through the game 
in my subconscious a little bit. <laughs> that's, that's really how I do it. That's how I don't like re usually run into things. I'll even sometimes like be able to like loot and everything while I'm still looking to chat and, uh, and reading. It's just been a skill I've worked on over time and gotten better at. Uh, Richard B asks, would you ever play a scary game with the face cam? PS, keep killing it. Um, Richard, I've played scary games before. Um, I've done a playthrough of Outlast, Outlast DLC, Soma, um, also Resident Evil 7, Resident Evil 2. Um, I think Resident Evil 7 is uploaded to YouTube. So is Outlast, Soma. These are like back in the early days, actually. So if you guys were ever like wanting to look at those and see what it was like back in the early, early days, like different graphics. Like God, when I played Soma and Outlast, and now that I mentioned this, I know that some of you are gonna go back and check it out. I had a freaking like beard growing out at the time. Um, I was still working at Costco at the time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've played scary games. I love scary games. And uh, you know, if there was some good ones out, I'd play them uh, on stream as well. Nolan Altman asks, do you have a favorite RPG? Do you even like RPGs? Um, role-playing games. Absolutely, dude. Um, my favorite game of all time is Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Um, I also really love Skyrim. When I, gr I grew up playing RuneScape and, and uh, World of Warcraft as well. But yeah, my favorite game of all time and my favorite RPG of all time, Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Absolutely love Oblivion. So many good memories in that. I've put thousands and thousands of hours into that game. And there's actually a mod, um, a, t a mod team or a dev team that is modding Oblivion into Skyrim. It's called Sky Oblivion. And uh, when they complete that, I'm going to play through it on stream. Um, and I think, I think they're kind of getting close to the point where they, that's going to be a thing soon. Um, so yeah, that's my favorite RPG. Absolutely love, love Oblivion. Interesting. So Ecstatic Shadow asks, what movie universe do you feel would become a great game? Why? Would it be single player, multiplayer, both? Which company would you like to create it? Um, this has already happened before, but I really think that a game that needs to be made is either KOTOR 3 or a, a game similar to KOTOR. So I guess the, the it would be like Star Wars, not any particular Star Wars in, 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 in general, um, but just, yeah, but just Star Wars in general, basically. Um, and yeah, Make another KOTOR or a game that was like similar to KOTOR, maybe in like the modern day. Kind of go along the lines with the last question. Like if you had a Star Wars themed like Oblivion, so maybe I'd want like Bethesda to make this, but I'm talking about like the Bethesda squad that made like Oblivion and Skyrim. They, I feel like they just have not done as well recently when it comes to like Fallout and uh, some of their decisions they're making with that. But if I could choose a company of a specific time, like, uh, Bethesda that worked on Oblivion, Skyrim, and in the Star Wars universe. So basically KOTOR 3. Um, it doesn't have to actually be even KOTOR 3. It could just be a Star Wars game with like space expor exploration, planet exploration. Exp why, why, why can I not say that? Exploration. Um, yeah, that's what I would want. Uh, Pervin Ram asks, how long have you been lifting? Brother, one minute. Oof. Okay. <laughs> I've been lifting uh, since I was in seventh grade. So that's, God, that's about 12 years now. Um, I was very consistent from seventh grade until I was about 20. Um, and then what happened was I started streaming on Twitch. And once I started streaming on Twitch, um, I kind of fell off a little bit. Um, I, I've still stayed into lifting some, but there, there's definitely been times where I wasn't like pushing myself as much as uh, I used to. Um, and I've gotten back into it recently within the last like year and a half. Um, so yeah, about 12 years, but maybe like about a year or two, two years time in between there where I didn't lift as much. Um, Rickard asks, how did you come up with the name Wolfpack, uh, the theme for your channel? What does it stand for? How important is it to you? So how I came up with the uh, Wolfpack theme was, was this. Um, so I always played sports growing up, talked about that. Football was like my, my first passion, my first really big passion. Love football, man. Eat, sleep, breathe football. Would be going to football camp, strength training for football, 
football tournaments, all sorts of things, right? And um, my high school team was known as the Wolfpack. And when I started on Twitch, I wanted to bring the same passion that I had for football to Twitch. And so I felt like when I was first coming up for the theme, when I thought of Wolfpack, it made a lot of sense. Um, so one, because it tied in my old passion of football. I wanted to bring that same drive over, but also because it's a great theme for Twitch and for like Twitch chat, because a pack has to work together to be successful, right? Without, without you guys, without my followers, without the viewers, you know, without the fans, I'm nothing, right? But at the same time, if I'm not trying to lead this ship and, um, you know, go after this goal and this dream, the wolf pack's nothing either. So it's kind of a thing where it's like, it brings the community together, the community works together, works together um, with other fans, with other viewers, with other people in the chat, um, and with myself, right? To uh, try to push this, push this dream forward and make the pack the best it can be. So that's what it all comes from. Um, Ash777 Holland asks, this big fan says, you know, alternative universe where Twitch and streaming gaming in general doesn't exist. What would you see yourself, imagine yourself doing? Um, I definitely would have went into something along the lines with like fitness. Um, I think I would have likely started like an online coaching business and probably been coaching people and trying to help them work towards their fitness goals. Um, and eventually maybe on, later on down the line, like working, trying to work more with like athletes and training athletes. Um, that's kind of what I was really interested in. It's part of what I went to, to college for was to study, study nutrition and exercise science. And, uh, it just kind of connects in with, with sports and everything. It's always been something that I've really cared about. And, uh, I still pay attention to like, obviously exercise, nutrition, those sorts of things now, but obviously not coaching anybody. Corey Hendershot asks, um, what are some of your favorite games growing up? Um, so one of my favorite games, um, the first game I, that I actually ever played was Super Mario 3 back on the NES. So when I'm coming up, I started gaming mainly all, always on consoles. It was the NES first, the Super NES, PS1, um, N64 a little bit at like Friends House, like a little bit of GameCube at Friends House as well. Um, and then after that, I had PS2, then it went to Xbox 360, and then after my Xbox 360, I, I, that's actually eventually when I it started going towards like PC, um, around that time. So let's, let's like name one per console. So like Super Mario three on the NES, Super NES, Super Mario world, loved it. Um, and then let's go with like N64, GoldenEye. Um, after that PS one, I didn't play this game that much, but one of my favorite games that I'd always watch my brother play was uh, Resident Evil like Resident Evil Director's Cut, which was Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 2. I'd watch him play those. Scared the hell out of me as a little kid, but uh, absolutely loved watching him play those games. Um, that's why I'm still into like Resident Evil nowadays. And then PS2. Man, out of all the PS2 games, one one was probably my favorite. Uh, maybe like one of the Call of Duties. Like Call of Duty and Medal of Honor were, were games that I played quite a bit on PS2. Um, and then Xbox 360, like that's COD 4. Halo 3, um, Oblivion, Skyrim. Those are definitely all the ones on Xbox. And then, you know, eventually moved over to PC where I started streaming on Twitch and played uh, Arma. Also, I got to throw in some like MMOs in there. RuneScape, WoW. Played those growing up. Ton of fun. Elena Wilson asks, do you have a desire to make content outside of the gaming world? You have a genuine personality and very motivational. So would you ever do vlogs, workouts, tutorials, advice videos, etc.? Elena Wilson, yeah, I've thought about that actually. Um, do I have a desire to make content outside the gaming world? Uh, I would say yes. The big thing with that is like I stream already every day. So I stream, I try to stream like right now, like a minimum of six hours a day, every day. And so it's like I wake up, you know, eat, eat breakfast, go and start streaming six hours. And then it's like, Time to go to the gym after that. Obviously, you got to eat as well. Take care of other things in life. Do stuff still with the family and everything. It's like if I want to really try to have like much of a life outside of the streaming, of outside of streaming, it's kind of hard to do other content. But it's something that I do want to do. It's part of the reason that I'm doing these and like the AMAs. And there's more stuff that I want to do. I've thought about doing vlogs. I've thought about doing these different things. I do have a desire to do them. But um, 
It's about, it's about like finding the time to do them or making the time to do them. But yeah, that'll be the final question for this video. And boom, this is what I wanted to show you guys right here. Would you look at that? That is my, this shaker cup that is barely released on the G Fuel website this week. Um, so yo, they're up there right now. I'm gonna leave a link in the description. TSM this merch, including these hats that you always see me wearing, this Wolfpack t-shirts, also hoodies, keychains, lanyards, mouse pads. They're all up on the TSM shop. There's always a link in the description down below. But yo, thank you guys for watching. Can't wait to answer your questions in the next video. I'm this. I'm out. Later's YouTube.